Welcome to this Gretel tutorial in which we will learn how to develop forecasts of new observations in Gretel. The data we will use in this example has to do with customers' cost of life insurance. Specifically, we will have a small data with 92 customers, and we know several things about them. First, we know the cost in dollars of their life insurance. This is what we will be trying to predict for new customers. We also have data on other variables that may influence the cost of their life insurance, namely age, which is the number of years, gender is a binary variable indicating male or female, and smokes will indicate if this customer has the smoking habit or not. The table to the right shows you an example of the data where you see the cost numerical variable, age and numbers, and also the two categorical variables, gender and smokes. The model that we will be using considers the following. First, we need a dummy variable to indicate gender. In this case, we will have male equal to 1 if gender is male and 0 otherwise. We will also have a dummy variable y smoke indicating if this customer smokes and is going to be a 0 otherwise. Finally, when exploring our data, we noted that as customers grow older, the cost of their life insurance grows faster. Thus, we're going to integrate into our model a nonlinear relationship between age and the cost of life insurance. Our model is as follows. We have beta 1 times age plus beta 2 times age squared, and then beta 3 and beta 4 multiplying the indicator variables for gender and smoking habits. Our ultimate goal in this tutorial will be to forecast the cost of life insurance of two new customers. The first will be a 44-year-old non-smoking male, and the second will be a younger 25-year-old lady who does smoke. Now let's go to Gretel. Okay, so I have already opened the file lifeinsurance.csv in Gretel. And you can see that Gretel shows us we have the cost, age, gender, and smokes variables. Moreover, it also recognizes gender and smokes as categorical variables, and you can see it assigned a 1 for male, a 2 for female, a 1 for when a customer smokes, and a 2 for when the customer does not smoke. Note as well that Gretel tells us we have 92 observations in our dataset. The first thing we want to do before transforming any variables, for example creating the dummy variables, is to add two new observations for the two new customers for whom we want to estimate or predict their cost of life insurance. For this, we come to data, add observations, and we tell Gretel we want to add two new observations. These are two new rows in our data set. And you can note down below that now we don't have 92 observations, but rather 94. We now want to input the data for these two new observations. For this, we're going to select all our variables and come to data, edit values. Note that we have all the data for 92 observations, but not for the last two, which are in blank. We will now fill these in with the data of our new customers. Our first customer was a 44-year-old male, so for gender we're going to input a 1, and this 44-year-old male did not smoke. So I put a 2, which represents no. Similarly, the other new customer was a 25-year-old lady. So I input 25 years of age. Gender is going to be a 2 for female. And we have that this lady smoked, so smoking is going to be a 1 for yes. Once we have this, we apply the changes, and we can close the data set. What follows is to create the squared terms for age. So I'm going to add the squared term of the selected variable. I also want a dummy variable for gender. So I'm going to add dummy for the selected variable. And since I'm only going to be using male, I do not need a dummy variable for female. I'm going to skip the highest value and click OK. Now I rename this variable to male. And I will do the same for smokes. 
where in this case I want a dummy variable in case the customer does smoke. So I'm going to add a dummy variable for smokes, skipping the highest value, which was a no. That leaves me with smokes equal one, which is the yes. I edit the attributes and will change this name to yes smoke. Okay, we have all the variables you need to run our model. Let's do it. Our dependent variable is cost. I'm going to include my variables age, which was continuous. I'm going to deliberately not include the squared age, just to show you something interesting that will happen. I also include the dummy variable for male and the dummy variable for yes, smokes. We can now run the model. We're not going to devote time to what do these coefficients mean, but we know that they're all positive in the sense that as customers grow older, if they are male and if they smoke, the cost of their life insurance tends to increase. Let's try to now forecast the expected cost of the life insurance for our two new observations, our two new customers. For this, we come to Analysis, Forecasts. Note that Gretzel is very smart in the sense that it already knows that it is very likely we are trying to estimate the cost of the two new observations, numbers 93 and 94. It also has as pre-established confidence level a 95% confidence interval in our forecast. So we will leave the options as they are and click OK. Gretzel is now showing us the cost the predicted cost, the standard error, and the 95% confidence interval of our new variables. As we scroll down, we see that these variables are filled in for our two new observations. In particular, we find that the point estimate of the cost of the life insurance for the 44-year-old male is $210, with a standard error of 57.90 and a confidence interval that ranges from 94 to 325. Meanwhile, the estimated cost of life insurance for the lady, the 25-year-old lady, is minus 69, with a confidence interval that goes from minus 189 to 50.33. This doesn't make much sense, but let's reflect about this for a second. Why do you think the predicted cost of the life insurance for this girl is such an absurd negative number? I'm going to give you a few seconds to think about this. Okay, I hope your conclusion was that we're not using the most appropriate model. In particular, if age continues influencing the cost of the life insurance in a proportional way, as age goes younger, then we might find ourselves with more negative than necessary estimates. I will now proceed to fix the model and rerun it by including the nonlinear term of age. Also, my dependent variable was the cost, and I rerun this. Note that the squared age term is positive and significant, indicating that, as we expected, the cost of insurance increases faster the older you are. And I'm going to do the same process of forecasting new observations. Again, we're forecasting the values for observations 93 and 94. I'm going to click OK. When we go down to check the results of our new observations, we note that the estimated cost of life insurance for the 44-year-old male is $165, while the estimated life insurance cost for the female smoker is $250. We could examine the data and see how much does smoking affect the cost of life insurance, and that could explain why the young lady has a higher cost of life insurance than the older male. I want to leave this challenge to you. Try to create a new observation for a customer for whom we do not know the cost of life insurance. As the case of our lady, a lady with 25 years of age, but in this case, she doesn't smoke. What is the expected cost of life insurance of a 25-year-old lady who does not smoke? You figure that out. This concludes this video. Thank you very much.